So my previous video was about a Cisco 2911 and some other hardware that I ordered for my Cisco lab. And in this video, I think I'm going to update you on some equipment I have, including this Cisco 1841 and a Cisco 2960 PoE Plus that is in my rack currently. First thing I want to do is turn this router on, and I'm actually in the middle of filming my other video, and so I haven't opened up this bag yet, which is my Cisco console interface to USB. This end plugs into the computer, and this end plugs into a special RJ45 port on the router, or the switch. Like I said in my other video, the switch and the 2911 both have a USB console as well. This one doesn't. That USB port is for something different. We haven't covered that in my class yet, so uh, actually I think it's for if I want to upload a config to the device. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and plug in this console, even though the router isn't plugged in yet, and I'm going to grab a power cord from under there. And I've actually never done anything with this router because I never had the knowledge to configure it or the need to configure it or anything up until now. So this, actually, I don't think I talked about where I got this. It was during that hiatus I took a few years ago where I stopped uploading throughout my sophomore year of high school. Right as I stopped uploading, my IT guy at my old school gave me a giant load of equipment that they weren't using, including this, including a bunch of rack hardware like shelves and cover plates and there were multiple computers in there. Actually, when I say multiple computers, I mean like probably five or six computers, and I never made videos about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this up and uh, we can see what's going on. You'll notice I also have a open Wix slot there, and that is where this serial card is going in per the last video. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the terminal on my laptop here, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the router. This one's quite a bit quieter. So I got it going on my other computer, and I have the uh, cable plugged in there, and it runs down there, and it runs down to my uh, router. So, um, yeah, press return to get started. Oops. So yeah, obviously there is a whole bunch of config, and I probably blurred out most of it in post anyway, but um, there's a way to get rid of this um, somehow, and I'll look it up. So you can see the terminal screen up here, and we are going to go ahead and factory reset this router. So obviously I can't really do it because there is a username and I can't get into the command line whatsoever to do this. So according to hardreset99.com, what I want to do is turn off the router and then turn on the router and within the first 20 seconds of startup send a break character to the terminal. We're using Windows and it says if we're using PuTTY hit control plus break. So I had to switch to TerraTerm or uh, PuTTY rather for this. So let's go ahead and turn on the router and then control break. So we're immediately taken to a prompt. So there you go, that didn't show up earlier. Uh, after that, type the following command to tell a Cisco router to skip the existing config or settings on startup. So it's not happy about that. I can't type anything. So it looks like I got somewhere. So after sending the break command, I switched back to TerraTerm and now I can type stuff. So we're gonna go ahead back to the uh, thing here. This is the new page for the 1941 router, but it's the same thing. So config register 0x 2142, which isn't actually what those numbers mean, but uh, from there, reset. So things are going well, hopefully you can see everything. The fan in the router, if I move the router it also sounds pretty bad, so I might replace that fan. It's a 3-pin fan. I opened up the router, I'll do that when I finish this. So we're going to type in no, and I'm not really sure 
my computer just made a noise, but I'm not really sure why it says, uh, would you like to enter the, con the initial configuration because you're supposed to type no for that. Yeah, looks like we're done there. So I promised we would take a look at the inside of the router as well. So before we do that, I'm gonna install our serial card. So of course, in the last video, I talked about these. These allow you to connect to other routers and stuff like that. And this router did not have a plate over there. So I'm just gonna pop that in there. So the way you do this is you unscrew that screw like I did, and then you jam a couple screwdrivers in there, and then you separate the two parts of the case. And I also kind of twist them apart with the screwdriver. That is a kind of better option, if you ask me. If I just kind of push it here, I'm trying to not block the camera either, it separates with a loud snap and crash when everything falls, and you can see the inside of the router. Hopefully none of this is energized. I do have everything, I do have like the switch on the front turned on just to, just to uh, drain the capacitors. And so here's the inside of the router. It's nothing really spectacular. Power supply, fan, which by the way is not sounding too good. And again, it's a three pin fan. So I'm probably gonna replace it, but it seems to be running fine unless I move it around and then the bearings like grind horribly. So uh, yeah, I think that's really all I have to say about the router, so I guess we'll go ahead and take a look at the switch now. So this is my Cisco 2960S PoE Plus. This is a 24 port PoE switch with four SFP ports on it. Those are not SFP Plus 10 gig ports, those are standard gigabit. So I guess we'll start off with hardware tour on this side. We have the uh, mode button and all that, which could do with some better lighting there. So you can see we have the Cisco logo as my shaky camera work gives everyone a seizure. And we have all these different lights here, which I have no idea what any of them mean. A mode button, which if you hold that, it resets it. Could have used that on the router. These are the 24 PoE ports. And uh, you can see power over ethernet and it has a 370 watt limit. So they're in two banks of 12 there. Uh, kind of dusty, you can't really see that on camera. And then over here we have our standard USB port, USB console, normal console, and some kind of management port, and then our four really dusty SFP sockets. The sides are pretty plain, but the back has this stacking port, which allows you to link multiple switches together. This is actually a cover, and I believe a module of some sort goes into here, or something like that, and that screws too tight. But, um... We have our single fan, which is a squirrel cage blower that's pretty loud. And then we have a redundant power supply connection. That's not the same pinout as ATX. And we have a standard IEC power jack. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and connect this up to the MacBook Pro and start it up. So I figured before I turn it on, I'd go ahead and open it up. So there is our main blower fan there. and. The rest of everything, our power supply, you can see it's really dusty in here. If I just like wipe my finger along the circuit board, you can see it's uh, pretty bad. So I'm going to go ahead and blow all this out off camera and uh, continue the video and we can uh, go ahead and start it up. So it's uh, the night time now. Uh, it's been a bit. My phone was about to die, so I charged it and uh, I also cleaned this out. And I actually think it sounds like slightly, very slightly better now that it's clean. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and we're going to take a listen to how loud it is when it starts up and how loud it is when it's at idle. So uh, I'll grab the cord here, go around back. So you can hear it is uh, pretty loud. This is when the fans are at full speed. And while we let that boot up, I'm gonna pan the camera and set this IP phone here. And uh, I'll plug in the handset. So this is what it sounds like at idle and uh, it's still pretty loud, but it's not full speed. 
Yeah, so this phone here, this IP phone, is PoE, obviously. And we're going to go ahead and plug it into port 11. And uh, it turns on, obviously, PoE and everything. No real surprise there at all. So my plan for this switch is to put it in my rack, and it's going to be like my secondary switch. I'm going to be using this for PoE devices like phones and cameras. I'm going to be using a IP phone setup just to play with because we do that at work all the time and I really should learn how to do it. And I'm going to unplug this while I talk to the camera. Something else I think would be really cool is to put PoE hats on all of my Raspberry Pis and just have it where I can plug them into this and they boot right away off that. I have these uh, 6 inch patch cables I could just plug it in with that cable and have it hanging out of the switch in my rack if I ever want like a test file server or I'm experimenting with something on a Raspberry Pi, all I have to do is plug it in and it's ready to go. I actually didn't tell the story of where I got this switch. We were moving some clients from one building to another and this was sitting in the rack just not really doing anything. So my boss a few days later just said I could have it for like 22 bucks or something. It was two hours worth of pay. So I would say it's a pretty good snag for this piece of equipment. And with that said, I think that's all I have to say about all this. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.